ones, my real ones, my real ones. Run it up with my real ones, run it up with my real ones. Coming up with my real ones, coming up with my real ones. I only fuck with the real ones, real ones, my real ones, my real ones. My real ones, my real ones. Run it up with my real ones. Run it up with my real ones. I, I probably and I'm gonna delete this shit, but please stop saying rap is dangerous. Y'all niggas is falling into the trap. Cause if hip hop is dangerous, they're gonna stop booking shows around eight, each state. Stop making hip hop popular. The fuck are y'all doing, bro? Hip hop ain't dangerous, bro. This shit making more money out of any genre in the world. Hip hop is beautiful, bro. To be a gangbang rapper is fucking dangerous. To be a drug dealing rapper is dangerous. To be it, anything that's negative is dangerous. Idiotics. Fuck is y'all talking about, bro? Stop saying hip hop is dangerous, bro. It ain't dangerous. Y'all folks really about to cut y'all fucking hustle out. Fool ass niggas, man. Y'all need to stop saying that shit. Oh, God, bro. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I am Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is in hindsight, uh, today I gotta respond to Waka Flocka, dog. Uh, you know, shout out to Waka Flocka, Waka. I would love to have this. I, I'd holler at you on IG. Um, uh, I, I would love to scream at you about this right here. Uh, because what, what you're referring, what you're referring to when, when you said that, 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 uh, rap ain't dangerous and all that, yeah. Um, you were, you were, like, first, look, so we don't take him out of context, let's listen to what he said. Yeah, bro. Uh, sometimes your opinion on situations and certain topics don't matter. Yeah, rap is not dangerous, bro. Even if you say hip-hop is dangerous, y'all actually gonna make that dangerous. Y'all go make these folks make laws to stop in hip-hop music performing gotta agree with that part of to be honest like because it, it's it's a it's a crazy dynamic that's why i'm not just coming crazy at him because that part right there is not no lie um speaking as an artist i'm not gonna say that what he should have said was hey why y'all talking about that? Um, why y'all keep on saying that rap is dangerous? Really, what you should have did is just responded to the person you were talked to, Jim Jones, because Jim Jones the one who said it, and we'll go to his post momentarily. But my nigga, yes, if the if the artist. If enough people start saying rap is dangerous, rap is dangerous, then yes, they're playing right into the hands of the uh, who the fuck was that? Was that Ronald Reagan? Was that Reagan who uh, who declared war on on hip hop and shit like that? It can play right into their hands to where they can try to you know put legislation down on it and shit like that. But at at the same time. What you got to look at, Waka, is what's taking place in the game. Um, at this point in time, rap music is dangerous. It sounds horrible. It sounds horrible to say rap is dangerous. Let me tell you something. A white man, I think he was in Mobile, white man at a stoplight, uh, called a group of uh, young uh, black males pull up on side of them, banging, you know what I'm saying? Who was it? Uh, what's a uh, little John type shit? Whatever the fuck. Pull up. 
white man thinks that these motherfuckers is talking to him, he starts shooting in their car and shit like that. I think actually one of them died. I'm like, you racist motherfucker. How the fuck can you shoot motherfuckers because they playing their music loud? What the fuck you on, dog? Dog, and I be damn, my nigga. Not two years ago, I'm at the light. Motherfucker pull on side me playing the fucking, I don't know who the fuck that, some, some, that was the thing. I didn't know who it was. It wasn't like shoulder. It was like if you know the beat, you know the song. It's like all right, so I know what's what's being said. It was a nigga I never, I've never heard this song before. So it really sounded like nigga was being aggressive, talking, just aggressively talking. The tone of rap is extremely aggressive. That's why we like it because it has that passion, it has that emotion in it. But I'm telling you, like it sounded like a nigga was like, oh, what the fuck that. I really like, who the fuck, nigga? Who arguing? I swear to God, I did that. Who the fuck over there arguing? Sound like nigga screaming at somebody. You know what I'm saying? Um, Depending on how, you know, nigga, I can think that the beat, I can think that the, the beats is coming from somewhere over here. Nigga, I'm just hearing voices. Like, you know, in the city, nigga, sounds, you know, it's just, it's just crazy how sounds move. Like, it sounded like a nigga was arguing. So I can see how you can tense up. But that's, like I said, that's an example of how this music can physically change a motherfucker. Now, when we start talking about mentally, you know what I'm saying, what it do to the actual listener, you being in that mode to where that, this type of shit has become second nature to you, to where you don't even flinch at the, you know, how aggressive this shit is. And then you put drugs on top of that. Then you put youth on top of that. Now you got something. Now. Uh, so what you saying? Band rap. My nigga. My shit is always going to go back to the fucking source. Which he is. Raising children. It's always going to go right back there. Because with a. You know. But that's not even what we talking about right now. What we speaking about here, and I think that's where this whole conversation is getting thrown off, is like, you talking about this section, Waka. When Jim Jones spoke, and let's let's finish out what Waka was saying. When we came to music, we were only had sports. Like, bro, that thing cool, you don't ever believe it. Bro, hip hop ain't dangerous, the way you moving is dangerous. The way you acting is dangerous. The people you choose to keep around you are fucking dangerous. But it's your job, bro. It's your job, bro. To change your life because God bless you with a talent. God gave you a career to where you don't have to live dangerously. You don't have to punch clock. Waka. No, I said, let me, let me, I gotta talk to you, Waka. Hey. So what's, so what's the alternative? What? How am I supposed to move after all I give is this negativity? How am I supposed to move after all I'm giving is this negativity? How are you going to tell me that my career is not dangerous when I have to have security? Ariana Grande just had a bombing at her show over there in Switzerland, England, wherever the fuck, a couple years back. What are you talking about, man? See, I don't like that when a person overshoots some shit because they trying to prove a point. And I hate when people, you know, uh, it ain't nothing. I hate when they, you know, shoot, shoot shit. Like, this is a serious thing, my nigga. This is serious. Now, like I said, this, I'm with, I'm with numbers, my nigga. Two plus two is four. No matter how, no matter if this one, the two right here is trying to go, go get pick their kids up, and this two over here is mad as a motherfucker because goddamn it, a uh, bitch then burnt them. Uh, you know this two is, is throwing up like a motherfucker. They drunk last night. And it don't matter. This two and this two, you put them together, they're gonna equal four. Your motive should not alter the truth, my nigga. 
Because you you don't want rap to be, you know, banned and don't let motherfuckers tell you that this rap shit is dangerous. Uh, cause if, if they take rap away from us, see right there, you, it's already fucked up. So you've already said that your motive is you don't want the rap shit to be taken away. And I'm not even, don't, don't fucking make this semantics to where it's like, uh, uh nigga, don't worry about me, I'm straight. Cause I'm, no, I'm not talking about you in general. I'm saying for the point that you're making. Your motive here is, Neil, we don't want them to take away this because all we're going to have is this right here. I th it's a problem in that. It's a problem in that when you're saying that all we're going to have is sports. It's a problem there. When you put us in a box that they put us in, hope, like that's a, that's a problem. Why isn't fucking law school and, 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 and you know, med school, uh, like, that's kind of, you know what I'm saying? And that's why, like I said, I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about, you know, I talk about shit that I can, you know what I'm saying? I'm be on, I'm be there with it, but I'm not going to, you know, when, when people send me stuff about, you know, the coronavirus and, and, and what's going on with Bloomberg and shit like that, like, you know, that ain't, I don't. It doesn't matter to me how much you know about it because I'm going to have to be the one orating and explaining this. And it's like, I can have you on the phone and we can rock that. But as far as me speaking on it, I'm not versed enough in that. But this shit right here, yeah. And, and, and my motive is, 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 is pure in that I'm the Paul Revere of this shit. Y'all, they did something to this game and accelerated um, the, the fucking, you know, everything. The violence, the, the, how fast the nigga shine go away. Um, the way the law can pick a nigga up. Everything has been accelerated. They're not waiting on shit no more. And then when all else fail, they send some niggas in your fucking door. This is where we at, man. And and so why I, I had to come holler at you about this because when when we talking about, you know, Carolina right now, niggas can't, you know, black youngster just went to Carolina and he felt the brunt. You know, little baby just came out and talked about, you know, in Carolina how niggas, you know, tried to snatch the chains off his fucking, you know, neck and shit like that. Like Carolina is a hard place, and, and, and there are other hard cities that niggas just don't talk about, but every rapper know that when you go to this city, you gotta be, get in there and get the fuck out, don't, don't fuck with the whole, don't even get you a hotel room, nigga, just, just drive through this motherfucker, because these niggas is living like that for real, but I can't, I can't not go to this dangerous place, because all I talk about in my music is how dangerous I am. And I'll do some dangerous shit to everybody, even the dangerous niggas. But me, in real life, I know that dangerous niggas, when, once they get high and drunk, they become ultra dangerous. Even, your, even they friends can become victims. That shit didn't happen to Plies when he got slammed off stage. That shit should have never happened. It was a drunk nigga. It was a drunk nigga. This is why, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be for real with you. I've never liked um, being anywhere where it's drunk white boys. Drunk white boys? No, sir. I ain't fucking with it. You're gonna be drunk, white? No, hell no. So, nigga be going downtown and, you know, all that shit like that? Nah. I ain't fucking with drunk, white boy. Them drunk, white boy, they get out of character. And I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling going to court with no, you know what I'm saying? With, you know, with the victim being a white, because they, when they come to court, it's gonna look totally fucking different. It's not gonna be that fucking white boy that just, Keep slipping the word nigga out and fucking just being obnoxious as fuck. It's gonna be, you know, 
Chad of, you know, UCLA and he's, you know, a, a fucking junior. Uh, he's about to get his doctorate and all this other shit like this. And this comes from a great stock, all that shit. And I'm a fucking, you know what I'm saying? So, no, I don't. And then, you know, it's just, it's just a whole bunch of shit. So, um, when we talking about I'm making a music that the only niggas, my core audience is niggas who are violent by nature. And then I'm saying the seance. I'm doing a seance. I'm doing a ritual. I'm doing a, a nigga. I'm summoning spirits. These niggas listen to my song and murder people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you know, nigga, Wayne, Wayne, to me, Wayne was the, the rapper that you can fuck a bitch to. You know, nowadays, niggas, you know, they'll fuck a hold anything, but, you know, if we, if we used to be back in my day, my nigga, we used to, you know, get in the mood, listen to that Jamie Foxx, that, that, that Chris Brown, that poppin', poppin', yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we used to, you know, listen to that cool shit when we, you know, we got the light down low, you know, whip this bitch, we got us, you know, hole around this hole. That's that's before, you know, we just, you know, fucking off like that. But, you know, I don't know how niggas doing it. Now niggas might just, you know, buck into the ceiling with NBA Youngboy. You know, like, I don't know how niggas rock now, but Wayne was the only artist where you can, you can listen to him and still be, you know, fucking with a hoe, whatever like that. Um... But it, it, that's for a reason. That's for a reason because certain music is for certain things. You understand? I'm gonna keep because and see, I'm gonna tell y'all, man. This is why I really want to stay where I'm at in this industry. I don't want to really meet too many, you know, celebrities because now when you talk about them or you talk like whenever they come up you gotta kind of you know watch your mouth and shit like that so i would rather just be the you know what i'm saying the outcast i don't know none of these motherfuckers and shit like that but that's it's crazy because i'm also needing real celebrities in order if i want something to change i'm gonna need real celebrities in order to in order to validate the rap trap theory um, salute to all the celebrities who have came forth that will be a part of the Rap Trap documentary uh, so far. Um, so, you know, I might have to take a, you know, um, take one for the team on that one because I think that is a far greater goal, you know what I'm saying, than just me getting on this bitch and, you know, talking crazy about a motherfucker. But, and it's not about talking crazy, it's just I'm speaking I'm giving you real talk how niggas would talk. This is just real shit. Um, but um, if you're a patron, you know, like, we, we didn't got some hits from celebrities, like motherfuckers actually talking on the phone um, off this rap trap shit. Like, motherfuckers is really, like, my nigga, you a thousand percent right. And they wondering how the fuck I know this shit. Because... I, and we'll we'll talk about that. Go to the Patreon and, and you'll you know um, I let my lieutenants understand you know who's talking to us behind the scene. But nowadays, or you know, there's certain music you do certain shit to. You know what I'm saying? Like Jamie Foxx when we fucking hold Chris Brown when we fucking hoes. If we at the club, it's going to be trio fam. You know what I'm saying? And this is to say that I might not never listen to trio fam riding in the car. I might not never listen to um, Jamie Foxx in the club. You know what I'm saying? Different music is for different shit. Um, so when it's time to... Go, you know, y'all y'all in the locker room, y'all finna go out. You know what I'm saying? Or, nigga, we finna go, we hit it up, these motherfuckers in gay their location, and we riding over this bitch. Nigga, we finna be bucking to the ceiling. You remember how we used to do? Used to rock the cars, swerving up to the park. 
You know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't listening to fucking... Uh, we, nigga might be listening to club music. Y'all better not... I don't, anybody who fucking listen to y'all better not fighting this bitch before you go fight, you lame as fuck. Um, you listening to club music like... Uh, uh, all I wanna do, Roscoe Dad shit. Nah, um, you listening to shit that's you know gangster shit. So with that being said, nigga, you up this bitch and you doing the song like a uh, crime mob. No, if you buck, why? Like motherfuckers finna you know damn near mosh pit in this hole, and niggas can get to a point where shit. Or you got a fuck nigga in the crowd, throw something at you. You know what I'm saying? And now you heating. Oh, who the fuck that wall fuck nigga? And we're like, hold on. Hold on. Who the, who the fuck he told you? He think we all hoes in here? Because you bring the real gangsters out. You bring the real street niggas out. So we're like, that's, dog, that is a dangerous fucking situation. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And there's no way around that. That's what danger is. This cannot be a boy. This is where you move. It's the niggas you rolling with. What? So you can control every situation. There's no variables in any situation. Why? Because you know what the fuck going on. It when when them niggas are dog niggas will approach you just because of your gang affiliation. Nigga feel like you said some of the song that you want. Rick Ross with the the, the six point star and shit like that. Uh, Rick Ross with the uh, I think um, you know, all this right here. I think I'm beat me Larry Hoover just in case, I, cause I guess sometimes I, I go into it and I really feel like you probably be right here with me, but some people might be new, so I'll go further. Um. But you get in trouble for different shit. And when I say in trouble, you're not in trouble like, oh, well, no, you in trouble like you need to respond and you need to respond the right way. Not just the right way for these niggas, but the right way for the world. Because if the world, the audience, the fans, the consumers start looking at you like you ain't what you say, you ain't Rick Ross, then you end up like, um, Young LA. I hate keep using that example, but it is what it is. Flo Rida did exactly what he was supposed to do. He got in through the trap door. The cosign was from a uh, certified uh, gangster, which was Rick Ross at the time. This is before the CO rumor and all that shit. Flo Rida got in through that. And he got his ass the fuck out. Before motherfuckers, because that's that's all that's gonna happen here. You're gonna get screwed in this, screwed in this, screwed in it. And then if, only if, you make it out alive, you can, you know, try to find a way to, to climb to the top. And But like, are we gonna see any, any more mogul careers like Jay-Z, uh, 50 Cent, you know, Lil Wayne? I'm talking about careers where you can build a whole branch up under you. When's the last one of those we had? A motherfucker that, that you know, gets so big in this shit to where, you know what I'm saying? You you have a, you have this type of power or what 50 Cent Jay-Z and those guys were those the last of their kind. Has the industry gotten hip to what we were doing? And now it's like, no. Nah, from now on, you're, you're gonna get Kodak Black, NBA Young Boy, Quando Rondo. You're gonna get little shit, little shit, little shit, little shit, and you're gonna get the fuck on. We're not gonna make any more enemies. We're no longer giving our enemies weapons. We're gonna give you this money, give you this money, and then we're gonna murder you one way or another. And, and what's so crazy about it is because we don't see a problem, we won't fix it. Meaning, if we actually saw a problem with there only being, there being no tycoons, 
no fit this this say like there's no 50 cents no m&ms no dr dre no jay-z no puff daddy this and and to be honest i want to talk about rappers i really don't want to talk about producers and and you know uh managers and all. i want to talk about rappers jay-z is a rapper eminem is a rapper 50 cent is a rapper um, and y'all can keep on going while well, you might not be able to keep on going But shit, let's just say Nelly You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just just motherfucker who came in the game and, and now they just you know, Movies Title, you know the Clothing line, successful clothing line that's been fucking going for decades Was that the end of that? When's the last time we had an artist Transcend this shit Maybe I'm missing something Y'all know I, I can miss something Y'all let me know about that But I'm saying that It seems like because Us in the black community We have the spending power To make anybody successful If we saw That as an issue Then we would say Okay we're going to start pouring into this one artist. We're going to pour into this one. We can say Kendrick Lamar, I'm saying. Uh, and let's let's say uh, um, your man, uh, J. Cole Drake. Let's say Drake too. Let's say Drake too. Um, we'll say, you know, but like I said, though, I want them to transcend the, like, when you talk Jay-Z and Drake, 50 Cent and Drake, you know what I mean? Like, so uh, just give me those names in the comment section, but we have the power to say, man, fuck that shit. We're going to support this one artist right here and put them up there. But we just, like, and, but, you know, motherfuckers just think I'm crazy for asking us to do something together, man. But I don't see why. We all have this problem. Why wouldn't we all try to fix it? You know, and, 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 and you know, a child would say, just fuck it. Everybody just give a dollar to you know one person no, but it, I, I think that's a fucking great idea though every year we choose one black person to give one dollar to dog we can start it off with just a city every year every year in your city we take we take we do our own census we take a census of all the black people listen to me we take a census of all the black people in our city. Let's start small. Take a census of all the black people in your city. And we go straight down. We can go in alphabetical, however you want to do it. Give a dollar to one. Every black person gives a dollar to the first person. Um, Albert Albertson. We gave him a dollar. He has a whole year to take whatever he has. How much it like? How many people is that? I don't know how many people that'd be. But see, maybe we need to do it bigger instead of doing a city. Cause I'm trying to get a million dollars. Let's say a million dollars. I, I want cause I know we got a. I, I, but I'm not good with population counts, so I wouldn't really know about that. But y'all know what I'm saying. A dollar. Let's say there's three million people. You know, a dollar to Albert Albertson. So he has a whole year to rock out. Next year, $1 out of your pocket. Give it to Albert Bryanstein. Now he got a year to get his shit together. Next year. Sierra Tall. That was, that was a hard, that was a big ass skip. I said Sierra, so I, I, I fucked up. Um... Uh, uh, Tony Childs You know what I'm saying I wonder how that'll work 
I don't think it'll be hard. Why why can't we like dog being sophisticated and, and trying to do the the you know the the ritzy you know uh, 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 bougie you know black folk shit has not worked for us. Shout out to uh, uh, bougie's next. If you are someone who likes um, fruits and you want just a little twist with it, uh, fuck with my man uh, E.T. Washington. Um, he has something called bougie snacks. It's great if you're going out. Um, I'm gonna try to get a plug to put in a description box for bougie snacks. But there's, there's no way I couldn't plug that. I mean, I said bougie and he got something called bougie snacks. I I, I like I. I would rather say, shout out somebody than to be thanking it and not say it. Like, I, I feel like that's, to me, I just feel like I'd be hating not to say it. You know what I'm saying? But we haven't went anywhere by thinking, you know, just acting high class and not working together. So why won't we, fuck it, if you think that's thinking like a child, then let's be childish. Whatever brings us together, let's do that. But the, that's the whole reason why I started this shit is because that's not the way the world, America, has indoctrinated us to think. So when someone like me says it, ah, that's, that's that bullshit. That you know that that weird ass nigga, that uh, you know throw it off ass nigga. All these words. And so I was surrounded here in Daphne and Baldwin County. I was surrounded by motherfuckers who just thought that, you know, I was thrown off, but they all, you know, not not to mention I was thrown off, I was fucked up on appeals and shit like that. Some motherfuckers had plenty of reason to say fuck him. But then I came on here and I talked to the world and we connected. Because the world had no reason to show jealousy and hate they can you just heard the ideas and said that makes plenty of fucking sense if we could just do that um in a macrocosm way just stop looking at the person as a black man or stop looking at the person as a uh, a, a nigga with tattoos a, a, a down south nigga just look at it as a As an ally, as an ally, we gonna make look. Huh, trust me, if the world don't want to do it, Ao Nation, we gonna do it. We're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? And and nigga, we gonna make some work. Um, but you know, I, I got off track. But I just you know, I what what I'm supposed to do. Um. But as far as, you know, come on, come on, man. And and like I said, people saying that you taking, you could be taking it out of context. It's like, uh, no, I already said. Hold on. And I don't see why this thing ain't saying, man. Okay, yeah, I think that'll work out good. What's your number? A good number I can reach you at. I think we will find a good number. We both can agree on. for a month long period campaign. Shout out to all the um 
all the new advertising. We're getting a lot of new um, artists and business owners. Shout out. Look, we even have a... Um, um, we're going to start working with uh, people promoting their TV shows. Like... Um, it's not like it's not a website. It's actually like a TV broadcast and shit like that. I'm excited about that. Um, it lets me stretch my wings. It's, it's like my creativity and my promotion skills. So, uh, shout out to everybody. You know, 2020. I guess taxes dropped, so everybody, like, you know, what I'm saying, fuck that shit. I'm finna goddamn get me some promo. But no, I think that we pretty much understand what what you said. And, and, and what you were saying is all for yourself, for your friends, for your family. You are the boss. So if you hang around criminals, you're not doing your job correctly because you're supposed to get nothing to prove to no one. I know my handle, I know exactly what I'm going to do. When certain situations uh, present itself. But why, once again, dog, and see, that's when they do that shit. See? And see, it's, it's, it's what it is. But um, now you talk about you don't have shit to prove to nobody. And, and and you don't. You don't. You've already came in, done your thing, yada, 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 whatever. But the truth is, as a upcoming artist in this rap thing, the instant I start telling my real story, which is what, you know, we're supposed to do in the rap game, let's, let's take the whole industry being that you know the, the execs being evil and all that shit let's take that out of it but the instant that i tell my real story i offend somebody and in this rap game it is permitted not only permitted but damn near incentivized to do something to a rapper i don't know what kind of you know parallel universe or what type of words you think you have but my nigga, it's not fucking all good for rappers. It's open season for rappers. Taking a rapper's chain is, is damn near a initiation to be a goon. You can just do it for fun. Like, rappers get picked on. So if you don't want to get picked on as a rapper, you have to be outwardly fucking uh, tough. Like, black youngster, you know, actually, you know, whether either pulling a gun or, 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 you know, having some niggas do some action at the show in Carolina. Going outside with it. Draco action. This isn't the, you know, you know, you say surround yourself with criminal. What are you talking about? So you're saying that I should do, um, I should... Go to some niggas I've never seen in my life. Meaning, I should lose my day one homies. Just, just listen to me right there. I should lose my day one people that, you know, I feel like know me. I trust them and stuff like that. I, and I feel like they, they'll go for me, which I could be wrong. But just, just get into the mindset of a young nigga. Lose them and hire a unknown fucking uh, security service. And walk around and be called a bitch. Or, you know, get the security service that the label give label give me and be labeled a bitch, sales go down and I lose, or um get the security guards the label give me and they fucking kill me as soon as the label tell them to and make it look like a fucking accident. What 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 are we talking about here? Surround myself with criminals? I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. That is the only people I need to surround myself with. If I'm trying to get... What did you... Like, dog, you came up the same way everybody else came up. The game hasn't changed since you came up. You got to come out, uh, dress and go on from down south. You got to be stupid when you come in the door. You can't be this waka flocker. When niggas came to whatever coffee shop that you was at and sat down and told you come outside let's bump and you just walked away that was later in your career 
That's when you was already loving hip hop. That was, you know, when niggas stopped, you know, niggas wasn't fucking with you no more. You you had already, you know, fizzled and dissolved. It was over with. And then you got to this new, that's when you had start getting to this new mentality. Did you notice that once you got that mature mentality, your shit just started plummeting? Did you notice that? Did you notice as long as you were, when you came in, you was punking niggas with, uh, with, uh, uh, Slim Duncan. Y'all was stepping down on niggas. Came in heavy. That's how you got to come in this game. Nothing's changed. You come in the way that you talk about coming in, nothing's good. Nothing's going to happen. No respect, motherfucker. Gonna step over you, walk over you, and the public's not going to fuck with your music or your movement. You got to get co-signed by the street niggas from city to city. These rules that you're talking about, this shit that you're talking about, is not real life. This is the talk of a nigga who's in this position so you don't have to do it and you feel like other niggas ain't got to do it. A nigga couldn't have told you this shit when you first came in. Because if he told you that shit, he would have killed your career. You have no career. It's at a point right now where you have to be prepared to die or get a life sentence when you come into the rap game. If you want to be, if you want to tell your story, you either going to be about that or you going to try to come through the lyrical door or the pop door, you know, and it's just going to be, you know, good luck with that. Good luck. Because nobody wants to hear that shit, my nigga. I'm going to be honest with you. Niggas want to hear that gangster, gangster. You can say it in lyrical form, but you still coming through the trap door. Conway and, and uh, 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 Conway the Machine and, and Benny the Butcher and shit like they still, you know, prison niggas, it's still gangster shit. The labels aren't picking up niggas who don't live a dangerous life. This would like, come on, my nigga, what are you talking about? Everybody didn't peep the move. The more dangerous I am, the more labels will look at me. Like, Pop Smoke was not a fucking hell of a rapper. He, they, they, the voice was what it was. Lean. 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 Part of my lean. Who? Lean. Oh, you know I'm lean. Dreaming. Perky. Dirty. Dreaming. Oh, you know that I'm dreaming. Like, he wasn't, but they could use his voice. And where he came from, I've been shot. It's obvious I'm on this gang shit. Nigga, I can die any day. I can go to jail any day, nigga. Let's do it. Niggas fuck with that. Niggas don't fuck with shit. I'm straight, my nigga. I'm all good. Niggas just, niggas just tried to, you know, uh, uh, laugh at uh, the nigga the Tussie Roll two time uh, for having, for not being a felon. For actually having, this is the baby new artist. Uh, for not uh, having illegal weapons because he doesn't have no felony and, and he got a clean record and shit like that he got legal guns nigga janked him on that shit like nigga you with them legal guns in your video and shit like what the fuck nigga I would love to have legal fucking weapons but it's come on my niggas look down upon and this is just what it is dog I can't, I can't let that statement fly, dog. That's not realistic. That's not real life. That's not what's going on. This is what I'm saying. This is why I'm saying we have an issue. There's a problem here. Because if it's not dangerous, it's not going. It's not winning. You name me an artist that isn't dangerous. Didn't come in on the dangerous shit. Wasn't in a a a a, 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 a position where they could have got you know beat up, robbed for any like no fucking reason. There's not a reason needed. It's just you a rapper. You think that you like you you talking all this gangster shit. That's just it. I want to see what you about. 
when when the niggas spider lope them rolled up on the plies in Jamie Foxx video shoot in California, it wasn't because plies disrespected them. It's because Plies was talking about he was a goon and they wanted to see what you would like. They wanted to see if it was real. What the fuck? You come to test me just because I'm saying that I'm a gangster? Because I'm saying I'm a goon? Cause I'm, so because I said I'm a thug, you came to test me. Right there, that kills everything. A nigga comes and tests you because you said something about being something. Right there means it's dangerous. I can tell the truth about me being a gangster and how the gangster in this city is going to come try to make, see if I'm gangster. It's like the Salem Witch Trial. The only way to test to see if someone's a gangster? Come on, my nigga. So, you know, we ain't, like I said, this ain't, this is not an accurate statement you made. Um, I had to take it personally. Um, first of all, because of the fact that what Jim Jones said was what I said. And uh, shout out to Pacino. Uh, he's trying to find the clip where I said it. Um, where I said this was the most dangerous job. I actually said being a street nigga is the most dangerous. I said being a criminal is the most dangerous. I said the most dangerous career that there is, is a criminal career. Career criminal. Um because you don't have any allies. Even if you go to Iraq, you know who your enemy is. You can be in the thick of it. You still know who your enemy is. As a career, as a criminal, you don't know. It could be your baby mama, your mama, your brother, your best friend. Um, you're, you're, you're on edge from everybody. You're running from everybody. The police, your family, the ops. The drugs, it's just, but you have to be around these people. These people are your, these people are going to be your loved ones until they're your killer. They're going to be your loved ones until they're your, your, your fucking co-defendant. It's nobody. It's love for nobody. It's, it's just you. And it's 24 seven. And I think we can go and look home. I know I've always been real. I've never crossed anyone. Anyone. I'm talking about ever. Ever in my, my life. Ever, 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 ever. It's not a soul on earth that say I crossed it. And if they did, they're doing that clock when they look good. It's cap. Oh, my mother and my grandma hell for my It's cap. So when I talk, it's from experience. And I hope you ain't got experience. I did. Because I did it for you. And they're really, they came from who I come from. And I ain't gonna call it the struggle. I'm just call it a place where they don't got hope for people out there. A place where they just not telling us we ain't gonna be, but they putting things around us that's telling us and showing us that you ain't gonna be. And you living it. On I talk a little bit. Alright, um uh, yeah, I mean you ain't crossed nobody, but like I said. You can cross niggas by, you know, repping uh, your city. You know what I'm saying? A nigga got niggas who died from, you know, niggas, niggas in your city and killed his loved one. So, you know. Telling somebody the other day that to be a rap artist is the most dangerous job in the world. Why you say that? Wow, wow okay. Why I say that? Yeah. It's more dangerous than going to war in Iraq. Mm. Because you're always on defense. You don't know who's who. People can get right up on you and try to do something to you. You're always getting into beef. How many times we heard rappers um tour buses get shot up this week? Mm. You have a record speaking on that uh on that Capo talking about the good die young. Yes. I mean it's just the whole the whole the whole persona of being a rapper and shit is fucked. Mm. I mean and like I said when you. You are on defense. You're going into the club not knowing what the fuck is going on in the city. And on top of that, you're doing a demon seance. You are summoning the demon in these people after they've been doing drugs, doing their own ritual. Because doing drugs is a ritual. Rolling the blunt is a... You're summoning a demon. You're, you're calling a demon. That, 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 
that uh um what is it that um that ceremonious ritual of uh breaking down all that shit that is you're summoning a demon you're opening your please i am it's, it's not, no different than a fucking ouija boy this is me talking to you telling you this is how i feel this one like this is hitting the bag you know you chopping up whatever like that you get your whatever you got your card or whatever and motherfuckers and they dip they key and, and some motherfuckers will just you know uh make a fucking uh what they call a hitter uh, out of a piece of paper and dip in a bag whatever the fuck you know what i'm saying popping a pill you're summoning a spirit you're summoning a demon take it in i'm waiting for and like the, it's the mental part of it you're waiting as you're waiting for the drug to hit this is you i'm open i'm open i'm open to whatever you have to give me whatever this um um what do you call it's it's something that you call the thing in the in the seance the object that you use y'all tell me what it is but you you've taken the sacrifice and now you're just waiting for the um demon to take control and then it hits he's here now you can call it liquid courage and whatever you want to do and shit like that. After everything's went down, now you're going to say, liquor made me do it, man. I was on them pills. Let's slow that down. Liquor made me do it. Take that word, take liquor out of it. Made me do it. Just listen to rappers, um, uh, future is very good for this telling you what the the Molly had him doing what it made him do and I gotta stay away from that cause it, it, that, that shit would take me somewhere man because I know I it ain't no question I know I know what the fuck it is you just alone for the ride. And tell that shit where, till you come down. Dog, you don't understand how many niggas are in prison. That was my worst fucking fear, dog. What the fuck? Cause it, it, the, what, I always... The only time I would be gone, like actually leave, and I'm actually physically on autopilot and not just being pushed and, and going to do it, going to do it. You know what I'm saying? When I'm actually out of there was Xanax. My worst fear was to be to pop that goddamn Xanax and wake up in a holding cell. And I'm telling you, dog, I am so blessed that that never happened. Because it could easily happen. If not from, you know, hurting somebody, you know, actually, you know, killing, because you know, you, you, will, you will kill a nigga on Xanax. You don't give a fuck. fuck what you saying, fuck nigga? Fuck nigga, what? Just, just anything, dog. You want to say this is a game for, and I, I'm, I'm, you know why the fuck I'm, you know, got this low voice like this. What you said, bro? Bro, you know how I fucking kill you, dog? Bro, I fucking kill you, dog. Fuck this shit. And it's so, it's just, dog, it, it's, it's, you will fuck a bitch raw that you don't have no business, dog. You will get head from a bitch without like, you know it's bad when you know when you pose to use a condom to get head. That dope, dog. That dope. What is what's what what's the point? What's what was what was that demon's purpose? It was to destroy you. Look what you were doing on that dope. Look what you allowed to happen on that dope. Look what you thought was okay. On that dope. 
but you can't do without them. You didn't got so used to, to, to letting him take the wheel that when you got to do it yourself, you don't feel right. It's too much work now. You summon a demon, you gonna summon him. And he do all the work. To the point where now when you gotta do it yourself, sober, when you got control, you don't want it. And that's why, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's that, like I said, that's, that's something totally different too. But what I'm telling you, Waka, is you dealing with people, I, I don't have to tell you, that's what I'm saying, you making statements a nigga that never been in the world would, would make. Niggas on dope around people that they don't really like, they trying to flex. They baby mama in this bitch, this, you know, they homeboy, they cousin is a goddamn security guard, so there's so much fire up in this bitch, it's retarded. Niggas just can't wait for a moment to, to show it, this, this, you know, he came with this bitch, but he really trying to prove to a baby mama that, that, that he, he's still that nigga. You think niggas pre-gaming is a fucking joke. You think it's a game, my nigga. Nigga don't give a fuck about killing you in this bitch. And I told you that shit will apply. That shit wasn't supposed to happen. The nigga would just, he would just, he, I feel like the nigga, I listened to the nigga, like, why you, why you did that to apply? Man, I just feel like he was disrespecting me. You know, I put my hand out and, you know, he just, dog, the man brought you on stage, dog. The man, I think, gave you a hug and everything, like, I just feel like, you know, but he, but then he start listening off what he was on. I was on this, and nigga, uh, he was, he was, I, obviously he was drunk as fuck, but he was on the bag, on that molly. These niggas ain't in their right mind, and you locked in the club with them, screaming at them, fuck nigga, what's your been there? I'm gonna fall on with you. Look in the niggas' eyes. You don't know which one of these niggas is kin to the motherfucking security guard at the door. It's just a small town you passing through. Just coming to pick up a little check. Not to mention motherfucker run off with the back end. Now you gotta you run around this bitch trying to prove that you gangster. Because pretty much you did got robbed. Come on, my nigga, to stop stop that playing shit, dog. Too much this shit ain't dangerous, dog. You on defense, Jim, he said it. He might have exaggerated a little bit. Because like I said, being a criminal is, you know, obviously more dangerous, but I don't know. To be honest, I don't know, man. I don't I don't know. Right now, I don't know. Right now, I don't know. The way it's open season, a criminal, at least he can walk down the street as a criminal. A, a rapper can't walk down the street. That's a lick. That's a lick. If it's not for the money, it's for the fame now. This is the problem. If it's not for the money, it's for the fame. Nigga will do it to you just for the fame, my nigga. You think motherfuckers is thinking before they act in 2020? Come on, my nigga. This, this. So, you know, just before we, we don't even got to go too deep into the rap trap. It's like my nigga, if you doing music, you gonna tell motherfuckers your story, and your story is gonna have some hood shit in it. Motherfucker might not appreciate the way that you said that shit, dog. Plies didn't have no fucking gang affiliation. Niggas just ain't like him saying that he was a goon. Niggas didn't like the way you rap. Niggas ain't like, come on, man. So stop that, man. You just made that statement just to make it. I understand your motive is. Don't let these folks take away our way to eat and all that good shit. But you said you didn't You didn't say a true fact. You didn't say a true fact. And then, like I said, you were coming at Jim Jones. 
you know, ah, oh, this shit ain't dangerous, and well, I, you know, but in that, Jim Jones was far more accurate than you were. So that's what that is. Um, this has been a rap trap. Y'all make sure that you go fuck with that um that Patreon. Right now we going crazy on that motherfucker. Um, we got the uh the car the cruise with the bitch went on that motherfucker and uh was fighting this her, her old man for whatever fucking reason and motherfuckers she just kept fighting kept he trying to get away trying to get away trying to get away and I be damn when you see he, he trying to go on the elevator she won't let him leave she keep on running back running back there's a nigga recording like nah bro you a real nigga cause you ain't hit her back it, and it's like how, hold on like how much are you supposed to take and she just I'm talking about for just now here come the, the the security guards on the carnival cruise boat. They trying to uh they trying to break it up, and she still won't stop. Do you know that they putting him in cuffs, and she's still fighting him? Boy, I man, nigga, get to the fucking Patreon. Um, we like I said, the Patreon is well we rock at um uh, all the exclusive shit like heavy shit that I really want to share with my people. Um. I put it there. So get over there and we're gonna talk more about that, you know, that dollar thing I was talking about. I know obviously it sounds like a pyramid scheme, but I'm saying, nigga, if we want to do something like that, I think we can do it. Obviously we can't speak as loud about it, but nigga, if we wanna do it, we can do it. Um, but I appreciate y'all, man. Go to the Cash App, go to the PayPal, show love. Shout out to everyone who was supporting the show on that tip, on that level. We had a, a, a big, big, you know, you know what I'm saying? Two, two, nigga, two. Man, there's a lot of love, and I appreciate that. Like I said, I'm trying to bring back the uh, AO Nation donation conversation. Um, but y'all know how that, you know, the, the people be watching and shit like that. Um, uh, but I, I, like, it's love. You know what it is, it's love. Um, but y'all know, we'll come back in a minute. I see y'all uh, go to the Canseco's Rap School. Heavy, heavy, heavy knowledge over there. All my artists, get over there now.